Welcome to our lesson about music hardware requirements. In this tutorial, we're going to be reviewing some hardware requirements for working with a digital audio workstation, or DAW. These days, the power necessary to run a digital audio workstation on your computer is fairly common. You don't need to spend extra money buying a computer that's appropriate for music recording, unless you're working with enormous projects. During the last two tutorials, I covered your minimum system requirements, but remember, more is better when it comes to processing audio files, especially if you're working with video also. Both files are very resource intensive. A wheel mouse is a good requirement. Although a regular one or two button mouse works with Cubase, this DAW's interface is particularly suited to a wheel mouse. It really helps speed up editing as well as scrolling through your work. Processor speed. You'd be significantly better off with at least 3 GHz, especially if you've got a lot of inputs and large files. Cubase will also support multiple processors, so feel free to stack them up. RAM. The more RAM you have, the more audio channels, plugins, and effects you can run at the same time. A 2 GHz minimum is appropriate for music recording, but if your project has a lot of inputs, use more. This is definitely one category where more is way, way better. Hard drive size and speed. Audio and video processing takes up a lot of space. One minute of CD quality stereo needs about 10 megabytes per track. So your three minute song with five tracks would need at least 150 megabytes. And that's just the final mix down. As you can imagine, your project gets really big really fast once you start doing multiple takes editing, adding effects, etc. So your audio drive needs to be big. To keep your system working optimally, you'll need at least one third of the hard disk to be empty. The faster your drive reads, the more tracks and plugins you can run at the same time. The quantity of information your drive can read is known as what's called the sustained transfer rate. So watch for that term if you're buying a new hard disk. If you can only use one hard drive, partition it into a drive for your operating system and programs, and a drive for your music recordings. However, it's always preferable to have a second hard drive that you can dedicate to your music projects. A second drive improves the performance of your recording and playback when you've got large sessions or use a lot of live plugins. You should record only to your system drive when you can't really install a second drive or partition it. While a laptop is great for portable recording, to be comfortable at home, you'll want two monitors, especially while you're mixing. Then you can keep your project window in one monitor and your mix window in the next. Be sure to back up your work frequently on an external hard drive or some external media like a DVD, and maintain good archives on external hard drives or other external media. Keep enough space free on your system disk so that your computer can transfer quickly, which is really important when monitoring your audio and video. You'll need at least a third of your disk to be empty. On a Windows platform, be sure to do your disk maintenance by cleaning up and defragging on a regular basis. Your audio interface needs to suit your needs and budgets. Considerations are numbers of inputs and outputs, portability, etc. So don't get the most expensive thing you see, get what is appropriate for your needs. There are many products on the market and most are compatible with Cubase technology. This course is filmed with an M-Audio Firewire product. Ideally, you'll want to record your audio in 24-bit sound and then dither it down to 16-bit quality. So your audio interface will need to meet these requirements. If you're preparing soundtracks for DVDs, you'll want to record at a 48.1 kHz sample rate. Your audio hardware will usually have a specific driver written especially for the card. A driver is a small piece of software that lets a program like Cubase communicate with the hardware. In Vista, you can use the generic low latency ASIO driver, but you will get better performance and results if your card is internal rather than internal. For example, one that's connected by USB or Firewire. It is always best to use the driver that comes with the hardware and to keep it up to date from the manufacturer's website. Decent monitors are key. 
Headphones are great for late night work, but don't use them for mixing. Well, what about your home stereo? Well, most computer systems have got built-in EQ curves that add sheen to your sound, while studio monitors present your material with accuracy. A good microphone is a must if you're going to record with accuracy. Microphones is a huge topic and very subjective. Some people swear by the sound they get from the cheapest dynamic mic, and some will only work with the high-end pieces. The best thing for you to do is experiment. Find an audio shop that'll rent you a microphone. It gives you a good chance to check out the sound. Read different product reviews before you buy. Recording Magazine does some pretty good objective product reviews. Vocal mics have got different qualities than instrument mics, so it's really important to take the time to get the right mic for your purposes and sound, as the quality out is only as good as the quality in. I would say that of the recording process, the trial and error in setting up the right input is the most time-consuming part of this process and the single most important part in determining the quality of your output. So take the time to get this right. I cover a lot more about this topic in my general course on digital audio recording, mixing, and mastering. The all-purpose vocal mic is the Shure M58, and the all-purpose instrument mic is the Shure M57. I use both. They're pretty robust dynamic mics, and they give you a good quality. If you want to use MIDI with Cubase, you need a MIDI interface for connecting external MIDI equipment. Most audio interfaces and sound cards today come with at least one MIDI input and one MIDI output. You'll also need a virtual or external MIDI instrument where the sound can play and the audio equipment to listen to it. Your external MIDI instrument can be, for example, your keyboard or synth, or it can simply be a MIDI controller. Cubase comes with a number of virtual instruments, so you'll have a lot of different high-quality sounds to choose from. There's also a lot of virtual instruments on the market that are compatible with Cubase. I work a lot with Motu products like Virtual Symphony or Ethnic Instruments. As you can see, there's a lot to think about in setting up your digital audio workstation. This concludes our lesson about music hardware requirements when you're working with a DAW.